Okay, let's do this. Dynamic sequel. Oh, very bad. Very bad. No, you're not supposed to use that, right? Um, and probably the, you know, one of the big reasons is SQL injection. You don't want to go building your SQL statement out of, you know, what your users are entering into a web page or something. Um, another problem is, is that uh, dynamic SQL avoids uh, cached query plans. It's not reusing query plans. And, and that's not entirely true. Like, let, let's say a uh, SQL statement contains a product ID in it. And if that product ID is just the same, it, 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 and, and the, the SQL statement entirely is, is the same, it will find that query plan in the cache and reuse it. But generally, it's bad because, you know, SQL Server is building all these query plans for each product ID. But it's also pretty good at building query plans, so maybe that's not so bad. It's a relative thing. And then, and then the third issue I have listed here is permissions, which, uh, you know, if you're not running into that, maybe that's not so bad either. So, um, you know, just be aware of potential SQL injection, and maybe, maybe dynamic SQL isn't so bad. I would avoid using it in production code and, and try and limit it to, you know, deployments or investigations or fixing data, things like that. All right, let's look at an example here. Um, now, this is dynamic. You know, this video is really about um, execute SQL stored procedure, which is built into SQL Server. There's another one here that I'm using, which is ms 4 db which is also built into SQL Server and, and comes in kind of handy that you might want to know about this. Um, so here's my dynamic SQL, and what this procedure does is it replaces the question mark with the name of the database. And if I, if I run this on the current database, it just returns results for the current database, right? But if I run this, it returns a result set for each database. So there's a lot of result sets, and, and that's kind of inconvenient. So if all of those results all match the format of this temporary table I have here, then I can get them all into one table, and that makes it a lot more convenient. And the way I, by the way, the way I created this temporary table is I didn't define each individual field. Instead, what I did is I did like a, a top zero into this is going to create that table for me. It's kind of a convenient way to do it. So that works fine, except, uh, you know, what if you don't necessarily know what the set of columns is? I mean, you know, it's a dynamic SQL statement, so you might not know what the columns are that you, you want to retrieve into a table. Um, Plus, maybe there's some other portion of that SQL Server statement that you, I mean, that SQL statement that you want dynamic. For instance, maybe it's the name of a column or, um, you know, the order by part of it. And, and also, what if, what if it's just one value that you're trying to get from the SQL statement? Um, that's, you know, it's a little inconvenient to have to create a table just to do that. So here's, here's our first example, which is going to do just that. It's just going to get one value out of here. In fact, I'll run it just so you see what it gets, and it gets DBO. So what it's doing here is just saying select top one rows from the list of schemas. Now, this, this is the entire SQL statement here that for which I'm executing the execute SQL stored procedure. And I have a variable defined on the outside, and I have a variable defined on the inside. This is actually a parameter, right? And it's defined kind of like a parameter in a stored procedure, where this is an output parameter, so you put out there. Okay, so then, and, and so I'm, I'm setting that output parameter in my SQL statement, and then I'm passing it from the inside to the outside. So this isn't a very practical example. So um, I'll show you another one. And uh, this one's a little bit, this, this one I actually use on occasion. Uh, so what I'm doing is I, I just want to find out what the path name is. So I'm, I'm using this uh, database files system table, and I want to get the path of one of 
the files for this for a particular database. Uh, I want it for rows, not for the log, right? And I want it for whatever the latest database is that's been created in my server. So I'm ordering by create date, right? And then I get my database name, and then I'm using it in my SQL statement. Here's here's the here's where the database name goes, right? And when I call execute SQL, I'm getting I, here's my outside variable, and here's my inside variable declaration. You see it's also output, and then I'm passing it from the inside to the outside. So when I run this, I get my path. Okay, let's see if we can come up. This is, this is where things get fun. So in the past, I've used this execute SQL stored procedure to audit dynamic queries and I can use it to capture the results of a query and then pass the results on to the caller and then I have a copy of the results to either record or examine in some way and I don't I don't really know the AdventureWorks database too well but uh, I hope I can come up with a realistic scenario and these two queries work in AdventureWorks. So let's say it's a, it's a serious problem if the users from one business entity see anything from another and the developers have been instructed to always filter on, on business entity ID. But we want to add additional checks here and there where it's reasonable and for that reason developers have been given in additional instructions to always include the business entity ID if there is one available. Now, if I, I capture the query and those IDs, I can write them into a log file and use them for an investigation later on of like which queries are not returning IDs or ones that are returning too many. So here I've, I've created a uh, stored procedure that can execute those, uh, those dynamic SQL instructions that have been passed from my, I don't know, client, API, whatever, and, um, and I can execute them from within this stored procedure using the execute instruction, and I get the exact same results back. And now, I, now that I have that SQL statement running in this stored procedure, I can examine these results. And I can even modify the SQL statement and have it still work. It's still returning those results. And I could even convert that result set into XML. Now, instead of returning that XML to the client the way I'm doing here, I want to capture that XML. So I want to do something like this. So there I am returning the same results. And now that I, I have the XML, I can parse it. And I'm returning a row of XML for each row in the data set. So that's cool, but really what I want to do is just gather up those business entity IDs. So now I'm returning the list of business entity IDs, but I also want to return the results. So let's change this again. There, now I'm returning both the results and the list of business entity IDs. Now the plan here is to do like a uh, into some table of the SQL statement and the list, but I'm not going to do that here. This is just a demonstration of how you can use execute SQL to pull some small amount of information out of the results of the SQL statement. So that's pretty useful and there are there's plenty more to the execute SQL stored procedure that you can do as far as um, 
I demonstrated an output parameter, you could have parameters going in as well. And this is a very important part of uh, uh, preventing SQL injection, is using parameters in the execute SQL stored procedure. Plus, if you do that, the query engine will recognize certain parts or parameters and then reuse query plans. One last thing is you can also use it to control the uh, database context of what it is that you're trying to execute by executing the execute SQL statement that's in some other database. There are uh, some downsides. I'm just listing one here because it's really frustrating that you cannot do dynamic SQL in a function. It's just not allowed in user-defined functions. So that's it. If you uh, think it's incoherent or uh, too fast or doesn't work or maybe you have a recommendation for some other video I should do, please leave a comment in YouTube. I would really appreciate it. And always give me a thumbs up. Don't give me a thumbs down because that's worth something. Thank you. Bye.